WandaVision, Episode 4, Thoughts. So, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by New Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nerdist, and Screen Crush. And, yeah, so, let's see, yeah. I appreciate the previously on. I had forgotten that Monica Rambeau briefly paused before saying that Geraldine was her name. So, you know, we still don't know exactly, you know, how much, how, uh, how much self-control she was left with once she was in there, you know, and did she actually, yeah, did she, was she the one who chose her clothes? I guess if she doesn't have a home, but she didn't wear the same thing, holy crap, I guess, yeah, the show changes their clothes for each other, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about something that, it's possible that the, the, you know, filmmaker, yeah, crew didn't think about that aspect since, you know, supposedly, according to episode 3, she has no home in Westview. But anyway, you know, I am aware that the MCU is not 100% perfect. It's just extremely close. I don't care if you call me an MCU fanboy. Just go nuts. The, the, um, let's see. But, yes, what I wanted to say was, we don't know if Monica Rambeau was basically just pretending all along. I, I do hope that we get... I, I can imagine they'll probably answer that soon, since this episode ends with her leaving Westview. So, you know, I suppose that's a... That's the, that's the nice way of putting it. She was thrown out of Westview, literally, and... Yeah, I can imagine we'll get at least some of the highlights of the debriefing in the next episode. And we'll find out if she is forced. It really seems like everybody else is. But I guess it's possible that the spell that changes, that forces them to behave in a way that fits with a sitcom is specific to the people that Wanda pulled in or the ones that were already in the area maybe moving through the area when the spell started, and someone like Monica Rambeau, who came in later. But yeah, in this episode, she specifically says, you're trespassing, you know, so that is, yeah. Now, let's see. But, but yeah, you know, the fact that she paused briefly before saying Geraldine, seems to suggest that she knew that it was, you know, that she had at least some level of self-control. And, yeah, you know, we we have an episode that does not start out playing like a sitcom episode. I still love the first three. I, I have to wonder if... But, but I also love this, and I, I really do think... You know, we needed an episode like this that really grounds it, that explains what's going on outside, and, you know, gives us a lot of, uh, yeah. You know, we get we get a bunch of information. People outside of Westview have forgotten about it. That's why nobody, like, drives through the area and ruins the sitcom fantasy, for example, you know. And, yeah, just... But the, the, um, I have to wonder if it was a very deliberate decision that the, as far as I understand, the, the episodes that critics were allowed to see before they started airing were the first three, not including this one. So I, I have to wonder if they were, if, if it was Kevin Feige and, and the others trying to be careful that Critics didn't know too much about what was going on. And Monica Rambeau comes back. And, yeah, we're, we're on the other side of the blip now. I really appreciate the, the tragedy and trauma and chaos that we see in this episode as a result of the blip. I'm not surprised that Far From Home played it for last. That that movie already does have some really dark 
you know stuff in there so and and yeah you know if you if you watched homecoming it's not a surprise that the blip was played for laughs but i am glad that we are now seeing it you know being treated as the the really just an unbelievably painful experience that it was we saw the the you know the when when scott lang emerged on the other side of you know yeah he he wasn't dusted and blipped but he arrived on the other that sorry he arrived after the dusting before the blip you know we see some of the pain that the blip caught that the dusting caused but we hadn't yet seen you know at the end of end game we see some people come back and it's more played as like a victory for the good guys than this really i mean yeah, a lot of people, you know, 50% of people, it, obviously overall it's a good thing, but it must have been unbelievably traumatic, and we see that in the hospital. I really appreciate that. Like, several people accidentally ran into each other, just the the disorientation, you know, that that's, it, it, yeah. And, you know, the, the she was sitting there next to her mother in the bed, and she can't find you know that's that's so yeah it's it was really really emotionally distressing and you know yeah it's explained to her and she can't believe that her mother died it's again very emotional for both you know both both her and us in the audience she tries to understand the truth and the nurse has to explain about the blip but that really is like, you know, so, so let me think. Monica has been, you know, disappeared for five years. And what was it three years ago? I think she said three years ago, the cancer came back and she died from that. And one of the, one of the Easter egg videos pointed out, it's really sad that Maria Rambeau died not knowing that her daughter was going to come back. She had no idea. You know, I'm not saying that she knew zero, that she didn't know anything about, you know, if if she lived for another three years after the dusting, then, you know, it, it was communicated to the world as best they could with all these, you know, a bunch of, like, you know, Scar uh, Black Widow says that, you know, countries fell into disarray because 50% of the people, so... You know, but as much as they could, they did inform people this is what happened. So Maria knew what the dusting was, but she had no idea the blip was coming. And but but I think it was the same Easter egg video they pointed out she did have hope. That's why she put the the ah, what's it called protocol in place. That means that if you come back from the dusting, you know. Hypothetically, if there's a blip, you can't just go right out into space immediately. We have to give you a, excuse me, we have to have you on something that's a bit less intense for a while. And, you know, and, and we find out that apparently Maria helped start S.W.O.R.D. and her offspring worked with S.W.O.R.D. So it's kind of a, like... The, the Rambo family is, like, you know, is to S.W.O.R.D. what the Stark family was to S.H.I.E.L.D. I like that sort of parallel. You know, the, the, hypothetically, they could have chosen, you know, the, the fact that Monica Rambo help, helped to create S.W.O.R.D. wasn't something that had to be there. But I really appreciate that it was, because... Ultimately, she didn't get a lot of screen time in Captain Marvel, and, you know, she was clearly a very intelligent person. It makes a lot of sense that she would help find, found, find, start, sword, and the, the, yeah, I, I quite like that, you know, she, she gets to be that important because she saw some stuff, and it makes a lot of sense that they would yeah, she, she helped start S.W.O.R.D., and once her daughter was old enough to join, she joined, and we're told that 
originally they did do space missions, but now they're focusing on, now it's not world, but weapon, sentient weapon uh, observation, something deployment, something, yeah, wh whatever, you, know, you can look it up, it's not important. And yeah, we get our first proper scene at S.W.O.R.D. I really appreciate that. It is wild to think about, like, before this, we had only seen just this very brief glimpse of S.W.O.R.D. in the post credit scene of Far From Home. But now it's it's there, it's established, you know, and they it really is sort of the next S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. And now, you know, if you were, like, worried that them getting rid of S.H.I.E.L.D. meant that we weren't going to have, like, big, cool organizations, you know, that it's not only, you know, in, in addition to Teams of Heroes, we also have the the organization. So, I mean, basically, they must almost have known, right, that they were going to, when they got rid of S.H.I.E.L.D., they figured that they would work their way to S.W.O.R.D., even though it took a few years to get there, but yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and we meet the acting director. I'm really enjoying seeing adult Monica Rambeau being herself, not having to, you know, act as Geraldine. And Monica really doesn't want to do the missing persons case. I like how she has sort of an attitude, you know, it's which I know it's very cliche for a black character to, you know, and I can understand. You know, people may be thinking that, you know, oh, of course they went there, but she's she's legitimately funny. And the fact that she, you know, she comes out of, she's been missing for five years, and she walks in the door and is like, just, she, like, she practically puts her feet up on the table, you know. I really like that. She, yeah, confidence. It's, it's, yeah. And... Yeah, so Monica does get to West Westview and meets Jimmy Woo, and he says he's still FBI. You know, we we've been actually I forget if it's been confirmed or if there's just theories, but we you know we we knew that he was going to work with Sword, and I think there were at least some people theorizing he's straight up like working for Sword now. Like you know he's no longer FBI. But it makes sense, you know, it's a missing persons case, and let me think, he said that they were in witness protection, and that, yeah, sorry, mi missing persons doesn't necessarily mean FBI, but witness protection, that means it's, it won't, at least, I forget if it's FBI usually, but it's going to be one of the federal, you know, and let's see, and it's, it's a neat way to get into, like, I have to wonder if there are some people who are going to watch this. Like, hypothetically, there's probably someone out there who were like, I don't know if I want to get into WandaVision. And then they read, oh, it's, you know, it's basically a sitcom for the entire episode, for first episode, second episode. You know, they kept checking in. And, oh, okay, first episode, just sitcom. I'm, I'm holding out. Second episode, same. Third episode, okay. Eventually they're going to get. And then they hear about the fourth episode. It's not just the sitcom. They go in. And they have no idea what we're talking about, missing persons. But, you know, those of us who watch, we're like, oh, so they are, there are living people. You know, it's, it's not just, it's not hallucinations and she didn't raise the dead. Which, I, I appreciate that we get that, because that was, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious to go there. That, I mean, the, the trailer brings it up. You know, Agnes, you know, gets brought out of it, out of like a hypnotic state or something by vision who, and, and she asks, am I dead? No, why would you think that? Because you are, and the, the, the cackling, it's, love that. So, yeah, you know, and now we know, no, they are, they're, they appear to not, well, yeah, I mean, if, if Monica went in, didn't die, and came out still alive, it's very likely that the others, excuse me, in there are still alive as well, so, yeah. You know, and the, but, but yeah, you know, the, the, this thing of just, it, it starts out with just missing persons and then, you know, they, 
every, you know, all these different people get, you know, Darcy in the, in the clown car, as she calls it, clown bus, something, because they don't know what they're dealing with. And eventually, it, you know, they, they start realizing. And Jimmy Woo did, like, a, you know, magic car, like, I, I forget what it's called, but, like, close-up magic or something that, you know, so he learned it. He, in, in Ant-Man, he was, he was trying to get good at it. Can you knock? And the, the, you know, but now he, he learned it, so. Let's see. For those who don't remember, that, I just made a reference to Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's not that there's a person over there. And the sheriff of Eastview claims that Westview doesn't exist. And, you know, yeah. So basically, if I understand correctly, at least, he is the, per the, the, not the, he's not the president of it. He's the sheriff of Westview. But there's this amnesia thing, that, you know, so that's, that's why people don't, like I already mentioned, they, people don't go in there. And no one is really, ah, wait, how did we find out that there was a missing person I guess, hmm, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not, it's, people aren't constantly calling into Westview saying, why haven't I heard from you? You know, there's a, there's this sort of amnesia of, uh, you know, people outside of Westview can't remember it. You know, they're literally saying, like, the sign is right there, it says Westview, and the sheriff is, is completely certain. This isn't a missing person's case, it's a missing town's case. And we see that the drone that flies in was actually that small. It wasn't a really big normal-sized helicopter. And, you know, we thought that it was a normal-sized helicopter because in the trailers we see a normal-sized helicopter, at least interacting with the force field. I guess we haven't seen it gone in. And, yeah, the drone disappears into the force field, which is actually invisible except for when someone comes closer and interacts with it and and despite Jimmy Woo's warnings Monica continues to touch the force field and eventually get pulled in lieutenant trouble indeed you know and and that again I appreciate that we've already seen she has an attitude she is you know she's rambunctious she's not she doesn't like taking orders basically and that, you know, because we've seen, I mean, if she's going to show that much attitude with the acting director, of course she's not going to listen to Jimmy Woo. You know, the, he's literally not the boss of her. The, the, but he is pretty good. And the, the, yeah, so, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a really good way of, and, and it is also this thing, like, the moment that you have someone disappearing into a force field, it's like, were they careless? Did they not know at all? You know, all these things. I feel like the fact that she, yeah, she was just, she was too curious. She couldn't help, but she wanted to know what was on the other side of that force field. You know, it, and that actually, yeah, come to think of it, does that maybe help explain why, as far as we've been able to tell, she's the only person who, like the, the, you know, unless you go through the force field, you don't end up in there, right? Because the people, ah, I, I didn't catch if the people, you know, they, they confirmed their real identities and they were not who, you know, they, their names were different from the names they give in the sitcom, but... I f I'm not 100% certain if they did live in Westview already or what. But, yeah, it seems like you have to physically go all the way up to it. And, you know, I mean, she, she bit, didn't she stick, like, her hand into the force field before you, you get pulled in? So between people outside not thinking that there's anything there, and the people who know about Westview not thinking that it exists, yeah, it would make sense that no one is going in. And yeah. yeah, like hypothetically, imagine if like a busload of people 
suddenly drove through the force field, that could be a bit of an issue for Wanda. You know, she give is she gonna give each of them a new separate identity? I'm 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 currently going off the idea that it is her. The end of this episode seems to suggest that it is her, although she doesn't quite realize like when she's ah, what's the word? She she seems a little shocked after she you know pushes Monica Rambeau out. But it does appear to be her. She's probably being manipulated. But yeah. Anyway, the the that yeah, that helps explain why people aren't constantly not constantly. Why people why there isn't there doesn't appear to be anyone entering. The only people we know who entered are Monica and the the bee man, beekeeper. I I appreciate that we still don't know what happened to him. You know, we he didn't get pushed back out because they would have seen that they've got a perimeter. I think, as far as I could tell, they have a perimeter around the entire force field. So if she pushed him out of the force field. They would have seen that, but we haven't seen him. And it, right. And he, you know, she, Wanda saw him before, you know, the, the, in, a, in an entire episode before. We don't know exactly how many. I mean, didn't Vision say 12 hours? So it's like, it's basically the next day. Each episode is the next day. So, so yeah, you know, basically the next day she pushes Geraldine out. And we saw that. So I guess he's still inside the force field. And you have to wonder if he's like dazed or dead or what you know we it would make a lot of sense for him to try to contact the outside or maybe even leave through the force field anyway and i like that darcy is you know she's still funny and quirky but she's a lot more confident than in the thor movies and, and I like the, the thing that, you know, first she asks, so what do, what do you and ex, what, what do you do? And he's like, we're not supposed to, okay, so you're a, what was it, Boy Scout leader. And you and the other ones do tell, and then she says what she's doing, and she's like, they brought everyone, I, they have no idea what they're dealing with. And then the guy says, molecular biology, no one cares. <laughs> and Darcy corrects the guy that she's, Dr. Lewis, I have to admit, I'm not sure I had seen coming that she had got, I, I appreciate it, I'm really glad, you know, she, she's, she's been funny all the time, oh right, I guess I should say, I've always liked her character, I know a lot of people don't, but I always thought she was funny, I don't really care that, she, yeah, she did that bad sitcom, Come on, if, are we really going to hate every single person in Hollywood who's done a bad sitcom? That's, no, there's, a, she's legitimately funny and charming in the, the Thor movies and here. And, I mean, when we met her, she wasn't even interested in the kind of, like, you know, they needed an intern. And, you know, Selvig is like, I thought you were a science major, political science she was the only, she she was the only one who responded to the, the, you know. So, but over the course of those movies, she really got a taste for the the, yeah, this kind of thing. And now she's a doctor, you know. She she took the the. I I I mean it's not med school. I don't I don't know what it's. I forget what it's called. I think I used to know, but anyway, she took that entire education. And she just immediately, you know, she arrives and she's like, well, there's, there's radiation. He's like, I mean, they, they said it was safe. Well, yeah, for now. It's, and, and the, yeah, you know, it's, and, and let's see, I guess the fact that it's her, I guess that suggests that, uh, I'm sorry, I can't believe it, I'm forgetting her name. Jane Foster, Dr. Jane, was she a doctor? I forget. Jane Foster herself, oh wait, no, I was going to say that she was dusted, but if she was, but this is post-blip. Hmm, 
I'm actually not entirely sure why she wasn't the one they contacted. I guess it's possible. Could she already be on another planet with Thor? And we'll see that. Because she, she is going to be in Thor 4. And anyway. Ah, excuse me. The, the, but, but yeah, you know, she is now an expert, and, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see. And, you know, the, she, she, you know, she asks, so what, what data are you getting from the drones? And he's like, it's classified. So you have no idea. It's, that's pretty funny. She, she really just, she cuts right through the BS. Yeah, and we see the, the guy you know, going into the suit. So, you know, he did actually enter through the, the sewers. I had theorized that maybe he went through the... the I mean, he, yeah, technically he did go through the force field, but he went through the force field in the in the sewers, not in, you know. But, yeah, so the... the let's see. Yeah, he was... I had forgotten what it was called, but one of the Easter egg video people said, you know, called it a hazmat suit. That makes a lot of sense. Because it is, you know, there's radiation there. They, they said that. But it gets morphed into a beekeeper suit when, you know, when, when he goes through. Because that fits more with the, yeah, with what Wanda wants out of it. And Jimmy warned the acting director of S.W.O.R.D. to talk, and we get one of those typical Hollywood scenes of different heads arguing, but it wasn't too bad. And Darcy has the TV working, and yeah, and, and then we, they see the, the sitcom itself, and yeah, and, and I forget exactly what the questions were, but you know, the Three questions are asked, and she's like, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know. And yeah, and we see that the sitcom is near the end of the first episode of the show, so we see what happened between, you know, outside of Westview with Sword for the first three episodes. Which is something I really appreciate, you know, it, it is the kind of, I can understand an argument for showing more of the outside from earlier on. But because we have three episodes, that means that we can now see, you know, the outside, the, the, we can see what Sword sees of this stuff. And, yeah. And... Yeah, just like the real life audience. Don't lie, you did. Darcy goes on when Wanda and Vision kiss at the end of episode one. And Jimmy Wu, you know, writes, "Why are they hexagon? You know, why hexagon shapes?" Which is something that people have theorized about. And it cuts, and we see, and why sitcoms is Vision alive? And you know, so one one of the Easter egg people pointed out they basically they put. A bunch of stuff on there that we have been wondering ourselves. And what does that say? Right. Yeah. They're they're realizing the real identities of the different, you know, the the people who were cast as characters in the show because they were inside the force field and they spot Monica playing Geraldine realize that the sword drone was changed and we see the other side of the radio transmission trying to communicate with Wanda and we see it did indeed happen live so that part of the theory checks out which also that really helps to 
explain why aren't they like constantly well they need Wanda to be close to a radio that way they can I think that is I'm I don't think they have been near radio I guess wait wasn't was that off a radio or was that off a an L LP player the the when when Vision was listening to music in the in the first episode they didn't try to communicate there did they only get the idea after that actually that makes sense I forget if that's said in the episode but Maybe they said, oh, hey, there was a radio here. It's too late now, but next time there's a radio. And, yeah, we see the guy in the hazmat suit go through the force field, become the beekeeper. And... It was already kind of weird to see something inside the show in color back when it was black and white, but, you know, the, the beekeeper, like, the, the sort of gradual change, it's it's very weird and, and creepy. I, I just briefly want to say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'll get to it in the, the, chronologically as well, but others have said that vision moving with his, you know, without the stone and and all gray and and just was the the scariest thing we've seen in the MCU so far. I'd have to agree. It's it's yeah, and and the yeah, I I I mean, and it shouldn't even be because we knew. I mean, that was one of the theories. Either he's like he's he's dead. Rest, you know. Last we saw him, he's dead. So he, maybe he's still dead. Maybe he was resurrected. Maybe it's like, um, what's it called? Um, hallucination or something. But yeah, you know, we, we already knew that we might at some point see him like that. But it was still incredibly, yeah. And yeah, we, we don't see what happened to the beekeeper just yet. I thought it was pretty funny when, you know, like, Darcy and Jimmy are, are sitting there, want, you know, watching the, the, you know, want to give birth, and, like, you know, she's eating potato chips, and she's like, you want one? And he's like, ah, oh, you know, I thought about it, like, little baby Jimmy Woo, and you could get him, like, a little badge. Oh, you meant a potato chip. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and and someone else, one of the one of the Easter egg people pointed out, they're really funny together, and they they've got really good chemistry. I'm I'm really, and and he said that Jimmy Woo was basically the straight man to you know because Darcy's still the kind of quirky weird one. Yeah, I I agree, and I think it really. I I think he was saying the words as well. You know, it just yeah the the I haven't seen Cat Dennings in a that many things but she does legitimately she's funny as this kind of quirky slightly weird you know yeah he, he also he said like she's the 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 nerd girl stereotype and yeah she's legitimately you know i i mean i think they did a good job casting her when when they were casting thor one you know she was a good choice for that kind of thing and yeah, I, you know, I could, I could definitely watch. I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of her and and Jimmy together, as just, yeah, they 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 bounce off each other very well. Twins, what a twist! What I'm invested. <laughs> Yeah, she really, you know, in some ways, she really hasn't changed. That that was, that that reminded me a lot of the the Thor, yeah. And we see what actually aired, and realize that Geraldine disappearing and Wanda talking to Vision did not air. 
And we see more of what happened when Wanda talked to Geraldine about Ultron. And she, you know, one of the Easter egg people point out, she is very, very creepy and, and like, hostile. Was that maybe the word? I, I forget exactly, but, you know, the, the it, it wasn't just, like, from one second to another. She, you know, she's standing there with the, with, you know, she makes the little orbs with her, yeah, yeah, the, the telekinesis orbs thing, and, I mean, she's basically threatening Geraldine. You're not my neighbor, and you won't be either. And, yeah, and, and we see the, the, it has the same red effect as in the movies, which we haven't seen in the show before. She's used telekinesis, some, you know, actually, I guess every, all three episodes, probably... And the closest we came was the red smoke when she tried to make the stork disappear. And, you know, and after she uses the, the telekinesis, she looks like she's not sure what just happened or why she did it or something. And then we see her using the telekinesis to fix the walls that she threw her. Yeah, she threw her through. And she does look genuinely disturbed by what just happened. And, yeah, Wanda looking at Vision, you know, she turns to look at him, and at first, she's he's gray, the mind's still, and, like, the, he's a synthesoid, so it's possible, actually, no, I think we were told that his brain is in his head. I mean, hypothetically, you know, it's a, it doesn't have to be the case for that kind of thing, since it could be put anywhere. But I think we were told that yeah cuz yeah cuz they talked about maybe we can move maybe you know if we had time we could remove the mind stone and vision could still live i mean that does kind of suggest that it's hooked up to his his brain cuz you know it, it's otherwise you wouldn't yeah but you know like it's just the the huge gaping hole and and he's moving that makes it worse you know, the fact that he's like, and he's like, what, what's going on? You know, it's just really, really horrifying. Yeah, and he, like his eyes were also like dead. Maybe they didn't, did they not have pupils? It was just, it was really, they, they did a great job of figuring out what, how do we make him look especially horrifying? And just, it, it has the, the kind of zombie thing. And you have to wonder if this is her accidentally remembering that he is dead and Maybe she's reanimated his corpse, or, you know, it's, it's possible that it's also just that was the last, you know, that was what he looked like the last time she saw him, but that was, yeah, really, really, yeah, very, very effective. And Vision says they should go home, and Wanda says, they are, we are home. Don't worry, I have everything under control. And Monica, you know, lands outside, and she tells them, it's Wanda. It's all Wanda. And the, the couple sit down, turn on the TV. What should we watch tonight? Is that just like a cute little thing because they're in a TV show and they're going to watch, like they are on TV and they're also going to watch TV? I, I'm not sure I heard anybody else float this theory in, in the videos I watch at least. But I have to wonder, is that why each episode is like a different decade of sitcom? They're watching a sitcom of that decade and then, like, the next day, you know, Wanda has subconsciously changed their surroundings into that. I do still think that she saw some of them as a kid in Sokovia, but, you know, maybe that's where she got a taste for it. And now she's watching them, you know, so they're catching reruns and, of both old and more recent sitcoms. And I saw someone, I forget if I brought that up last time, but I saw someone point out that, you know, the, the video I, where I talked about episode three, I forget if, yeah, but someone pointed out there's no way that she saw the most recent, which we know that there, you know, so far it's been 50s, 60s, 70s. We know that we're going to get like 90s, 2000s. So I don't know if the, like, yeah, that's my, my train of thought got back on track 
there's no way that she saw that in like a Soviet country as a, you know, the, they wouldn't have shown such recent American TV. Uh, you know, it would be, it's, it's in, in those kinds of cases, it's, it's out of date by a, a bunch. So, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I am pretty happy that we now get to see something outside of the sitcom itself, though it's... Yes, you know, since this, you know, th this episode, they, they caught up to the, the sitcom. I have to wonder if we're going to get more episodes that are mostly sitcom. I think it'll work well if episodes start cutting back and forth between sitcom and sword outside. But, you know, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Since, you know, if they're going to do each decade. This one, they didn't do the 80s. They just did the 70s that we'd already seen. So, Really great to see S.W.O.R.D. investigating and how several of the characters have grown since we last saw them without ceasing to be who they were. It's, you can still tell, you know, like hypothetically, if you watch Captain Marvel and then you watch this and you didn't remember the name Monica Rambeau, you could still tell that's got to be the same character. Now, let's see. I wonder... Do, basically, we were told in this episode that S.W.O.R.D. is now focusing more on, you know, sentient weapons on Earth than on other planets. But... Actually, no, I guess, didn't they say that they do both? It's just they're maybe more focusing on sentient weapons, but they are still doing space missions since we did see, you know, Fury out there. It was definitely a space base. I'm not certain they've said for sure that that was S.W.O.R.D., but it would make a lot of sense for it to be. And it's also possible that that's going to end up being an offshoot of S.W.O.R.D. and have a different acronym. As much as I've loved the sitcom stuff, I think this might be my favorite episode so far. It did feel much more typical MCU, and that's, uh, you know, for some people that's going to be, uh, I guess, even this show is going to be very typical MCU. For others, it's going to be, ah, uh, thank you. You know, finally something more familiar, but I, I think, I don't think it was too late. I think it, it was... Uh, but I can understand if some people didn't want to sit through more than three episodes of sitcom that they've if they've given up on it by now. But the I, I think it made a lot of sense to show all of the the sitcom stuff and now show what's what it's been like on the outside. I I think at least one of the Easter egg people suggested you know they could basically have opened with this. It's, some of this episode could have been with. If it, not all of it, because that would have, it would have been sucked to have the first three episodes spoiled by this. You know, I love this episode, but I don't think you should watch it before you watch the first three. But, like, the, the opening of the episode, a, a bunch of it, you could have, like, you could have, they didn't have to start with us already fully submerged in the sitcom world with this show. I'm glad they did. That makes it even more effective. But hypothetically, that first episode could have started with Monica blipping back, realizing her mom is gone, being sent on, you know, be, yeah, going to Westview, and then disappearing in through the force field, and then the rest of that, you know, then the rest of, yeah, for for the next chunk, it's just episode one of the show, you know, then that would give us a lot more of an idea of, you know, but the fact that it's, you know, they're, they're I want to say it's called backfilling, the, the, yeah, I, I think it really works. Yeah. I don't think I heard anybody else say this, so maybe I'm mistaken. I guess what I'll say is, it seemed to me like when Wanda threw Geraldine through a bunch of walls, 
that she threw her out so she so that Geraldine would fly directly past Vision. And obviously, if that happened, we would have seen it. We didn't see in in episode three. I mean, when we because Vision was right out there, we were seeing Vision, and then it then he went into the house, and Geraldine was gone. Which also, I I do like. We didn't quite know. Actually, nah, sorry. They did. They they revealed. You know, I don't know. Maybe. I guess it wasn't very many seconds where we were wondering, but I do like that we didn't realize right away that that was what Wanda did. Like, it's like, did she, like, just kill her and quickly bury her or something? You know, what exactly? Now, let's see. I mean, I guess we haven't seen Wanda intentionally killing human beings. She killed some aliens. She killed a bunch of aliens. But we haven't, in the MCU so far, seen her intentionally. And I would also say, she almost definitely... I I think I've heard some people say that Hulk didn't kill anyone in Age of Ultron, like any human beings. I really don't think... Well, yeah, I guess the robots is not really killing, is it? But then they do have sentience, so anyway. I, I, there's no way. For sure he killed someone in his rampage. They didn't show it because it's PG-13. But there's no way that all of them survived. And she did help. You know, without her help, Ultron wouldn't have been able to lift the the lift Sokovia. Hypothetically, let's say that Ultron was alone when all of the when, when the Avengers met Ultron and the Maximoff twins in Ah uh, Claws ship, I want to say it's called. I don't want to say it was. I'm pretty sure it was a ship, you know. Hypothetically, let's say that Ultron didn't have the other two. I'm not sure that they would have been in. That probably, like, let's see. I, yeah, I, I don't think that Ultron would have been successful with his plans if the Avengers were 100% focused throughout the, the movie. Now, let's see. But, but yeah, so, you know, hypothetically, if she had killed Geraldine, I think that would have been the first time. But that's the thing. We haven't seen Arthur Hart, Vision's boss, since the first episode even though we saw his wife, so there's a chance that he is dead, and that Wanda did that off screen, so anyway. But yeah, um, thinking more about it, I think maybe Wanda threw her through other, yeah, probably, I, uh, they, they probably did think about that when they, yeah. I appreciate that it is acknowledged that since they already sent the drone through the force field and that didn't go well, obviously there would be some people protesting sending through a person, but on the other hand, they do have to find out what's going on in there. They And they did try to be careful. They put him in a hazmat suit, they hooked him up so they'd be able to get him back if he stopped responding, but he stopped responding when they tried to pull him back. It turned out that, as we had already seen, the, the little thing had fallen off the suit. But, yeah, you know, the, the, let's see, it's, yeah, you know, Darcy brings up, it might not remain safe radiation, you know, and what if, you know, what if after a while, let's say Wanda is the one in charge, she appears to be manipulated, but hypothetically, let's say after a while, she's like, you know, I want more, I, let's, let's expand. And gradually, she takes more and more, and everyone is powerless inside her world. You know, who's to say that she won't eventually engulf the entire planet? So, they do need to deal with this, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure the guy knew the risks. Now, let's see. Yeah, and th this episode shows several times where something, you know, when something in the first three episodes goes against the sitcom reality, 
it doesn't actually appear on the old scene that Darcy sets up. So those were real breaks from the episodes we saw of the show within the show. Yes. Ultimately, the the you know there are still a lot of open questions by the end of this episode, even though we did get information. But yeah. You know, we got a lot of information. You know, there, there were things that we had theories about based on trailers and such. But this one confirms a lot. And, yeah. I, I got to thinking, maybe some people question why Monica wakes up next to an empty bed in the hospital when she gets blipped, rather than it just being someone else in the bed. But if 50% of all human beings disappeared, there probably would be a lot of empty hospital beds. So I do think it makes sense. It isn't just one of those things we have to excuse because it's for cinematic effect. Certainly it is in part for cinematic effect, but I do feel like it still makes sense. Now. But yeah, and and we, we see... You know, it, it certainly appears to be at least that when we, you know, at the end of the first episode of the show within a show and the show itself when when it pulls the the camera like pulls out and then we're seeing the uh what's it called we're yeah we're seeing someone watching the the sitcom on an old tv and like writing yeah i think writing stuff down maybe they 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 use the the yeah uh, remote control or, or something like that. Yeah, you know, I, I saw at least one of the theory guys say that that's like Darcy and certainly makes a lot of sense. She does appear to be the one who, who sits there and and I do appreciate, you know, they, they confirmed Sword can actually like they're I guess they're like DVRing the, the maybe maybe they're recording it onto VHS with with a VCR or something. But they can actually go back and watch parts of the episode, but they can't, they, you know, they can't fast forward one that's all, that's currently airing. That they do have to watch live, but, you know, that, that does help explain how they, you know, if they were only able to watch, you know, the, it would be very difficult for them to get a lot of the information, you know, because they, beyond theories, they've identified a bunch of these people, you know, so, yeah. And that is all of my notes for this one. So, yeah, as usual, I'm really psyched for the next one. I, yeah, I, I have to wonder if from now on it's going to be like half and half. Like the first chunk of an episode is going to be the sitcom. And then the last bit is S.W.O.R.D. working with the information that they've gotten that we've already, that we've just received ourselves from the sitcom or, or what. But, yeah. So... I hope you enjoyed watching, and I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.